Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's success story interview, where we are going to be talking with Jacrese about a recent match. And so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's, I'm glad to be um, sharing my story to help like future applicants. Perfect. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your match then? Yes. So um, I was originally born in Jamaica, so I grew up there for a couple of years. Um, then I moved to the States. So I did apply as a US IMG. Um, something that's a I guess was very unique that is some of the um, programs brought up was I did do undergraduate in the Caribbean because I moved a lot back and forth. Um, my parents like moved jobs. Um, so I did two years of undergraduate in the Caribbean and um, went to SGU because they, so I applied to both US medical schools and um, SGU. Um, okay. SGU allowed me to take the credit for the two undergraduate years. So I only did pre-med year three in SGU. So that's actually a lot of the, trajectory that a lot of the Caribbean students who like would be in other countries that come to SGU they do the kind of two undergraduate years they do the advanced um, exam which is similar to the undergraduate exam over here and then they go and do only pre-med year three so that's kind of what I did so a lot of the program directors they were like oh how are you like a U.S. citizen but you don't have like the undergraduate in the U.S. so it was fun explaining that and they were like oh that's interesting um, so yeah I did the pre-med year three um, and then I went straight into med school, um, did the MCAT and everything, um, and went to St. George's University. And then I came to came back to New York to do clinical rotations. And now I matched into New Jersey. So I'll be starting my residency there in June. Congratulations. And which program Thank was you. it? Uh, Cooper University Hospital. And where did that fall on your rank list then? That was my number one choice and I got it. So I was very happy. Yeah, yeah that's incredible. Um, how many programs did you end up ranking total? So I ranked 20 programs. I actually got 20 plus. So I actually got 34 interview invites. Wow. Um, but I only did. Yeah, but I only did 24 interviews because it was very stressful. Like coming towards the end, you get so tired of interviews. Um, so it was very, I hated like declining from interviews because you feel so bad because they give you a chance and they want to like talk to you, but like you can't do 34 interviews. Um, I was even surprised I got that many invites actually. Um, so I did 24 interviews and I ran 20 programs and um, Cooper was number one for me. So I was very happy. So how did you decide which programs you weren't going to interview at? What factors played into that decision for you? Yeah, so um, I applied everywhere very broadly. I try to focus mostly on the Northeast because um, I know it was very, it, it's known as like more IMG friendly, but I applied everywhere. So programs that maybe on the other side, like I would have declined from if I got an interview there or there were programs that I applied to that maybe because my focus really is going to be on medical education. I want to do like okay. a track in medical education um, nice. and also want to do a pulmonary um, fellowship. So say, for instance, if two programs give me an interview and one had like the medical education track, which a lot of programs now have a lot of um, and one didn't, I would decline from the one that didn't because I knew that I wouldn't have ranked them if that program, if I had a choice between two and one did offer the the track that I wanted to go into and one didn't. So I just declined from them so like others could get the spot. So that's how and how I um, differentiated between. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, when you were originally applying at the beginning, how did you start figuring out, you know, where you're going to apply to besides just, you know, having an idea about the region you wanted to be in? Yeah, so in the beginning, it was very stressful because you're like, how do I even find programs? Like, how, where, where do I even start? Like, I'm sure like all my students can like um, relate to this. So what I did was um, I actually used Matcha Resident. So okay. I yeah. saw one of um, one of the SGU alums. She is a Matcha Resident ambassador and she posted a video about how she's Matcha Resident. And I saw it and I was like, oh, that's a good idea to kind of like see which programs I should even be looking at in the first place. Right. Um, so I did the profile, I saw, I used the compatibility score of about 85 to 100. And mm -hmm. then those programs, I would write them down and then I would look on their website, see what they have to offer. And then I also use the AMC Residency Explorer, which kind of like showed like how you ranked with like your research, your publications, your work experiences. And so I use like mainly those two, Match Resident and um, Residencies Explorer. Perfect. Now, what was it 
if you could say now that yeah. you led you to having so many interview invitations, like what was it about your <laughs> application that yeah. made it such a successful IMG applicant? Yes. So I think it was my score, my step one and step two scores. Um, uh, a lot of the program directors did say that it were quite high. Um, and uh, so that was one of them. Also with like my application. So I did a lot of like tutoring when I was in SGU. Um, mm -hmm. I like wrote like you send me questions. I um, participated in community health fairs. I do volunteer work. Um, and also like the hobbies that I had, um, they were very different from medicine. So I'm guessing that they thought well, she's not only into medicine, but she can do other things. So I, I don't even, I guess that's the reason why I got so many interviews, but um, I think that having like a well-rounded application is definitely um, a perk to doing into residency. Yeah, it definitely sounds like having multiple strong aspects and a diverse, yeah. who you are as a person as well as a strong residency candidate. Yeah, especially like this year, like with it being virtual, a lot of the um, interviews, they focus mainly on hobbies. Like every single one of my interviews asked me about me being in pageants and me being a fitness coach, like every single wow. one of them. Yeah. So you can see they definitely focused more on like what you were as a person because you're not in front of them. You're not, uh, they can't really observe review and how you're acting with the nurses and those residents and staff so they're trying to like figure out who you are over the screen as much as we are figuring them out over the screen so yeah yeah do you mind if we dive a little bit more into uh the steps and what you did to yeah. prepare like how did you get good scores you know what was your strategy for getting good scores which helped you get these interviews as well as you know having the well-rounded application Yes. So definitely, I would say like um, starting at, um, in SGU, they really like drill into you from day one, like your goal is to get a good step one score. And what I did was from day one, like going through the different terms, I would not only learn the information for like the exam at the end of the term, but I would learn the information kind of to remember it. So I would build up on it. So at the, by the end of the um, pre-med, not pre-med, um, at the end of basic sciences year two, I kind of had a good foundation. So even I had two two months of dedicated um, step one prep, but I was able to use that those two months to do U World like twice. And <laughs> because I didn't have to like go over like um, a lot of topics because I would have used like the last semester and the previous semesters to um, like consolidate the information. So that's definitely something I would say to like, basic sciences, like MS ones and twos, like start from day one, like don't wait until the last semester and try and remember everything. It's a lot easier if you kind of like building on the knowledge each semester because you kind of understand it more and it makes sense. And then you can then do like the mind game of answering the questions because I always say um, like the exam is like 30% knowledge and like 70% of playing the game because you kind of have to know like how they're asking the questions, what they want you to pick out the tricks they have in like the one liner is like okay they have this trick in there so you can't be this answer um and there was a like a student i tutored for like both step one and step two and i would show her like this is how you read the question this is how they want you to read the question and look for the like, little tricks in the question because that's what they're trying to like get you to mess up and pick the other answer that's the best answer but it's not so that's kind of how i prepared for step one and for step two i um use online med ed um, U World definitely and um, AMBOSS. I did a lot of AMBOSS questions and I found that clinical rotations definitely helped you to prepare for step two um, mm -hmm. because you're doing the shelf exams like every after every rotation and it's basically all the shelf exams combined. So um, step two is definitely a lot easier than step one. I wish okay. everyone can relate to, but um, yeah, that's what I did. I haven't done step three as that. I'll do that in my first year. Perfect. Yeah. So it sounds like you had uh, the attitude from the beginning to really start building your foundation of knowledge rather than cramming at the end yeah. or just studying for you know, a lot of people take yeah. six months to study for step one, especially IMGs where exactly. you just have two, exactly. but it sounds like yeah. you had enough because, you know, each semester you're actually building upon yeah. what you learned. And so I think yeah. that definitely is a definitely. positive approach. So what was one of the most memorable aspects of the residency application season for you? So I would actually say it was the interviews. So I was very nervous at first, like I'm sure everyone was, like you don't know what to expect. You're you're hearing from like previous applicants, like, oh, you know, it's a conversation and it gets easier, but it's like, unless when you start, before you start, you're very nervous. And then once you start towards the end, it's kind of like they're trying to get to know you. So 
um, a lot of the program directors um, they were very nice they, it was like a conversation a lot of them were in their homes like just you could right. see like the background in their homes and it was very relaxed and they would just ask you about your hobbies and if you shared another hobby with them like there was one um, program director she also did um the beach body fitness that I am a part of and she was like Oh, which um, program are you doing right now? We're talking about like fitness. So um, I really enjoyed the interview, season, um, the interview part of the interview season. The application part is very stressful. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you like, get everything done and you get a lot of like, mentors to help you, advisors, and once you submit that application, then you kind of get to relax a little bit because you're just waiting for invites and then you just show them who you are. And if they, want, and if they like who they see, they will pick you. You just have to show them who you are. Mm-hmm. When did you start getting your application documents together? Like at what point in the year? Yeah, so I started getting my letters of recommendation from first rotation. So um, at the end of the rotation, I would ask the attending that I worked the closest with. So I would say that I would like you to write me a letter. Um, obviously, the application season would have been far in advance, but I would say that I would email you again um, if that's okay with you to, in, to get the letter uploaded because I waived my rights to be on my letters. So mm-hmm. I would need them to upload it for me. Um, so I asked everyone, they were like, um, they said, okay. And towards, I think the ERAS season opens in June. I think that's when the, they open for IMGs um, or for everyone. So around, actually, let me see, I think it was March, I started emailing everyone. So I emailed everyone, I was like, the season is coming up. Um, if you're still willing to write me a letter, I would love that. Um, and then I would give them a timeline like, um, we have to wait on ECFMG to like approve ours before it goes in. So I would like it to be done by like this instant time, if that's okay with you, um, so that it's definitely in by the time you have to submit or get everything together. So that's what I did. So for everybody who's listening, that means you start now. <laughs> <laughs> right now, like first rotation. Yeah, first yeah. rotation. It's easier to get them from the first rotation and then um, for the year three. And then obviously you're going to get some for year four as well because it kind of shows your, um, your progress. You know, you are you know a lot more. You're more comfortable. Um, I definitely got an internal medicine third year and I got an internal medicine fourth year, um, my mm-hmm. sub I. So I had both of them to kind of show the progress. And there was like one attending that I worked really well with um, for in, in emergency medicine. And I definitely made sure that to ask her to write me a letter because I worked with her for three weeks every single day. Um, wow. So she was able to see like my progress. And that was actually a letter that like every interview brought up. They were like, this letter was very like, she wrote very highly of you. Um, and that also shows like they really take into consideration the recommendations from their like their colleagues in the field because like they would give the highest recommendations. So if they're recommending you and you're working so well with them and they can say like you would be a good resident, they would want to like get to know about you and get to know why um, like why did you work so well and they'll ask you like, what did you do with the attending and then you can explain and yeah it's like a good conversation starter as well for interviews. Mm-hmm. So did you apply with three letters of recommendation for each program or did you apply it with four sometimes? So I used four for some and three for some. Uh-huh. Um, so I did was some of the programs specific, like specified they only wanted three. So for those, right. I would only give three. But for everyone who said like they didn't care about how many, I just gave four because I feel like you can't really lose by having four recommendations. Um, yeah. So I just like uploaded all four. <laughs> so can you break down uh, what specialties the letters of recommendation were from again for us? Yeah. So one was from IM, my in third year, internal medicine. One was from pediatrics. Then I got one from surgery in third year. Um, I got one from emergency medicine and family medicine. Um, and then for fourth year, I got one from internal medicine. And I got one from, which one did I get one from? It was internal medicine and infectious diseases. Yeah. So which is like a subspecialty of IM. So I had like a good amount to choose from. I... So since I didn't see the letters, I could not see like which one was stronger. So that was also okay. um, a stressing point for me because I'm like, how do I know they wrote like really good things and which one is stronger? And um, so what I did was the attendings that I worked the closest with and I knew would write really good letters, those are the four I chose. Mm-hmm. So if you, I would suggest that you waive your rights because it kind of shows that you have no conflict of interest, but I do know that some um, students cannot waive their rights because they have either have to upload it themselves or they maybe have to write their own letters and the attending signs. Um, so, but if you can waive your rights, like that's a good thing to do. 
Um, and then you would know like if you work closely with the tenant and how your relationship is and you would know how strong they write a letter for you. So you would kind of like have an idea, okay, this letter is probably very strong. I'll upload this letter, so. Perfect, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. If there was anything that you could do differently if you had to apply again, thank goodness you don't have to apply again. <laughs> yeah. But if there was some, something you could change or something you felt like you didn't um, actualize the best, what might that be? Yeah, so I don't think I would change anything really. Um, maybe yeah. start getting more advice from the beginning so it's not very stressful preparing like the ERAS application. Um, but definitely I would say one thing I would probably have done differently I guess, is apply to less programs um, because you could do it save money. I mean, there's a lot, but you do, the thing with is I knew I could have applied to less programs, but I didn't want to take the risk. Right. Um, because you are still an IMG, you know, you have that kind of bias. So I still apply to like a lot of programs and then you have like all your advisors telling you like, and I also didn't apply to a backup specialty. So that was also like, you know, I don't want to be like overconfident and then I don't match because you don't want right. to pay $3,000 twice, right? Definitely. So I so I just um, applied, to, applied to 130. Um, I originally only had 100, but then I like last minute just added in 30 more. Um, so just that's case. how much I applied, to, just in case, you never know. <laughs> but actually it's ironic because some of like 20 out of those 30 didn't get back to me. So I could have saved, could have <laughs> not like added that. But yeah, you never know. It's better to like hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, you definitely want to be prepared. Um, so I think that's I, maybe if I if I did it again, I probably would apply to like maybe one ten, um, or maybe I wouldn't have because you know you don't want to take the risk and you want to yeah. make sure you match. But yeah, I think I, other than that, I don't think there's anything else I would have changed really. So educating yourself early on so you understand the process while you're yeah. getting started with it exactly can be helpful and reducing stress yeah like right, reach out to like other um like there are a lot of like meds like not res not med students but residents that have like medical yeah. instagram pages and they give a lot of advice so we, i reached out to a lot of them especially the sgu alum um i watched like the videos on the match process i asked like my advisors and just kind of like getting the information because you don't really know what to expect and it's very overwhelming if you don't really know how to put the application together and how mm -hmm. to make it strong. So like there was one thing that I did, I saw someone said, it's good if you write, like, when you're writing out your hobbies or you're writing out your achievements, you can write like the year, you can write the achievement that you got, you can write what it is, kind of explaining it. So it looks right. very organized in your application. So like the person reading it, you're not, it's not just seeing like, okay, I got an award for like outstanding grades or outstanding like test scores, but like, yeah. what does the achievement mean? And just telling them, they're like, oh, this makes sense. Oh, wow, this is a really good achievement. And then, you know, kind of like getting them into your life a little bit. So that's kind of what I did. I took some time and like organized my application um, by like year, what the award or the year, the hobby, what I did in the hobby. Um, not like everything, because you do want a talking point. You don't want, you don't want them to like see everything and you have nothing to talk about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely like organize it really well. Great. Can you tell us a little bit more about your interest in um, the health education or medical education aspect of yeah. your pursuits? Yes, definitely. So I started getting um, interested in medical education from SGU. So in St. George's, they have this um, area where students can help other students. So a person in the term two or like a MS2 they can hold um, like lectures or not really lectures, but more like sessions to help the MS1s. So that's something that I participated in. So you would prepare like slides and like the, you would ask them like what their, what their weak points are. You would explain it to them. And it's easier to like understand things from like your peers than I guess like a big lecture hall we kind of like lost because in SGU, like we have a, a classroom of 500 students, which right. is like a lot of, yeah, a lot of students. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's easier when you can go to like small groups of 10 and then you can ask questions like, how do you remember this um, topic? And I'll say, this is how I remember it. And like, oh, that's a good way to remember it. So I got into that. I also tutored um, with a, another like organization I was a part of and that I had my mentors that I would help as well. So I really liked medical education. So that, and I knew that that's something I definitely want to continue into residency, not only just like doing the, the students that are on the wards, but like trying like um, helping the pre-meds and the MS1s, MS2s. 
because I find it easy. I know it definitely helped me because it was easier to talk to like um, the students above me or the residents above me and ask for advice uh, because you're closer in age, you're closer to where you are. They kind of can give you the advice that you um, you want, and especially if they go to your school, they know like what you can do because they went to the same um, university as you. So um, definitely that's something that's how I kind of got on that path and I hope to continue that um, in my program because they do have a track for that. So I'm gonna like, join that medical education track and then um, see what happens. Great, wonderful. Is there a way that people can you know, keep in touch with your journey and your story, um, whether that's social media or websites or anything like that currently? Yeah, definitely. So um, you can contact me um, on Instagram, just send me a message. Um, through my direct messages. I'll definitely respond and help anyone. Um, you can ask me any questions. And um, that's like the primary of getting out to me, um, mm -hmm. I guess. And then also, if you are like an SGU student, my email address would be on like the alum to contact if you have any questions. So you can always contact me at any time. And then we can go from there. Amazing. Do you have a final word for IMGs based on your experiences? Yeah. Yeah, definitely that it's possible. Like, don't let anyone tell you that you can't match into the like orthopedic surgery or any big, the quote unquote, like competitive specialty. Like, you can do it. Just know what you want to do from early, um, like plan out your path, get mentors, get um, really strong letters of recommendation, do um, build your application from early, and you can definitely like match into like very competitive specialties. It's possible. Just like know, get, get advice and get uh, others that are in that specialty to help you. But it's very possible because especially in this year, a lot of like IMGs match into like very competitive specialties. Um, so that's definitely possible. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for yeah. sharing all your insight and your experiences and advice yes. with us. It's been really informative and eye-opening and just grounding, <laughs> just, you know, taking the right steps <laughs> to make sure that you succeed. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And I hope that this helps um, some applicants.